An $8 billion price tag marked the beginning of the most ambitious effort in the history of protecting Venice, the romantic city now facing the threat of being swallowed by water. The Mose system was created to solve a problem that has lasted for generations, stopping rising tides, blocking seawater intrusion, and preserving a heritage city that sinks a little more every year. This project stretched nearly 20 years and requires up to 30, 40 million euros in annual maintenance, where every component must operate with absolute precision in a harsh marine environment. Political controversies, technical delays, and climate challenges have turned Mose into a symbol of humanity's enduring struggle against nature. How can a mechanical system hidden beneath the seafloor become the shield that protects the world's most romantic city? Let's find out. This is the romantic Venice we're all used to seeing, and this is the much less romantic version. The lagoon that once acted as a natural shield for centuries has now become the city's greatest threat. Flooding is no longer an unusual event. It has become a yearly part of life, with frequency and record-breaking water levels increasing sharply in recent decades. During the historic flood of 2019 alone, the water rose to 180 centimeter, causing more than $1 billion in damage destroying homes, shops, museums, historic buildings, and bringing tourism to a standstill for weeks. Venice is gradually sinking, and the cause doesn't come from nature alone. The Adriatic Sea is rising due to climate change, while the ground beneath the city continues to subside because of tectonic movement. The situation grew even worse in the 20th century, when groundwater was heavily extracted to supply petrochemical factories, weakening the soil structure, and accelerating the sinking. Combined with 12 to 13 centimeters of sea level rise and land subsidence, the city has lowered by nearly 25 centimeters in just one century, enough to turn once harmless tides into a constant threat. As Venice entered a state of red alert, a series of solutions were proposed, from reinforcing embankments to regulating waterway traffic. But the city needed something stronger and more long-term. That's why the Mose system was created a massive network of flood barriers designed to isolate Venice from sudden tidal surges. Mose is not just an engineering project, but the city's greatest hope for survival in an increasingly uncertain future. The design of Mose is like a massive mechanical suit of armor hidden beneath the water, rising only when Venice needs protection. The system isn't a single continuous wall, but is made up of four barrier lines spread across the three main inlets. Lido, Malamaco, and Chioggia, the only gateways between the calm inner lagoon and the rough Adriatic Sea. At the core are 78 steel floodgates attached to giant hinges made from corrosion-resistant alloys. These steel gates are built from high-strength carbon steel and coated with multiple protective layers to withstand salt water, strong waves, and harsh marine conditions, like layered armor on a metal guardian beneath the sea. Their size is equally impressive about 66 feet wide, 12 to 16 feet thick, and when raised fully, taller than half the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Altogether, the four barrier lines stretch more than 1,100 feet, forming a flexible defensive shield that still allows water traffic when the sea is calm. The entire structure is supported by sensor systems, a central control room, underwater maintenance facilities, and automatic biological cleaning equipment. Mose is more than steel and hinges. It is a living mechanical sentinel, always ready to rise and defend Venice whenever the tides come knocking. To create the foundations for Mose, massive caisson blocks were built at shoreline casting yards near the lagoon inlets, places with flat ground and enough space for large-scale construction. Here, long mold basins resembling shipbuilding docks were set up to cast reinforced concrete structures with extremely high strength. Each caisson is about 50-60 meters long, 30 meters wide, and 10 meters tall, with a total mass of several thousand tons. They are reinforced with high-strength steel and marine-grade concrete designed to resist salt, hydraulic pressure, and long-term micro-cracking. Inside each caisson are technical chambers, piping roots, and mounting points for the hinges, forming a perfectly stable foundation for the steel floodgates above, like giant footings waiting to be connected to Venice's protective armor. 
The massive caissons leave the casting yards to enter a phase of installation that demands near-perfect precision, supported by one of the largest hydraulic lifting systems ever used in a marine environment. On the water, a synchronized lifting frame made up of 26 steel beams, each 57 meters long, acts as the main support, allowing millimeter-level adjustments. Support vessels guide the caisson along a route surveyed by hydrographic data and satellite positioning, before it is transferred to a heavy-lift catamaran made of two barges connected by steel structures and equipped with 20 hydraulic jacks for load balancing. At the installation point, defined by radar and 3D modeling, the caisson is lowered at an extremely slow rate, only a few millimeters per second. The tolerance is just one to two centimeters, as even a slight deviation could affect the alignment of the entire system. Once it settles perfectly into the prepared trench, the caisson locks into place, forming the first foundation layer of the Mohs barrier beneath the Adriatic. With the foundation stabilized on the seafloor, the barrier gates are transported to the installation area using multi-axle carriers capable of distributing loads of up to 300 tons spread across more than 40 wheels to prevent concentrated pressure. As they reach the water's edge, a transition platform allows the structure to slide onto a barge with a draft of only 2 to 3 meters, suitable for the shallow lagoon. Inside the gate, adjustment chambers are filled with about 200 to 250 cubic meters of water to lower the center of gravity and reduce wave-induced motion, while inclination sensors monitor balance with an accuracy of less than 0.1 degrees to prevent structural twisting. Because of the massive weight and delicate balance, even a slight error could cause a gate to slip from the support system and fall into the water resulting in damages of up to 20 to 25 million USD. Thanks to this precise control system, the gates can be transported safely to the assembly point and prepared to connect to the hinges fixed on the seabed. At this stage, the gate is lifted off the barge and moved into the installation process, where every motion is controlled with absolute precision. Imagine a 210-ton steel structure suspended above the water, hanging over the open sea, Moving so slowly that it resembles a giant metal snail, the entire operation lasts three continuous days without any allowance for even the slightest deviation. To lower the gate into place, engineers assemble a special scaffolding structure made of four steel towers connected by horizontal beams, each beam equipped with four cable jacks capable of adjusting load and tension in sync. This support system is known as the fishing beam, because it holds and suspends the gate before lowering. Below it, an accurately aligned base frame guides the entire tower assembly. Once all connections are secured, a specialized barge carrying four crane systems is positioned and linked to the tower frame. From there, hydraulic strand jacks begin lowering the gate into the water at a rate so slow it's barely visible. Radar, load sensors, and inclination monitors track every reading because even a minor mistake could cause the massive structure to drop to the seabed, resulting in millions of dollars in damage and halting the installation schedule. Only when the gate fits perfectly onto the caisson hinge below the seafloor are the locking pins activated, marking the moment a section of the Mohs McMillan shield is officially completed beneath the Adriatic. Next, let's explore how this system actually works to protect Venice from extreme high tides. Mose is only activated when the tide level rises more than 100 cm above average sea level. Below that threshold, flooding only affects a few low-lying areas, and closing the gates too often could reduce water quality in the lagoon. Thanks to scientific forecasting models, tides can be predicted days in advance. But the final decision is made only about three hours before the peak, any later, and there wouldn't be enough time to raise all the gates, too early, and Mohs would operate when it isn't truly necessary. When activated, all 78 gates rise, forming four flood barrier lines. The gates are held at an angle of about 45 dordi, while the system constantly adjusts the water levels inside each gate to maintain safe tilt and balance. Once the flood recedes, water is pumped back into the gates to weigh them down, and they slowly return to their horizontal resting position on the seafloor. This leads to an important question. Does Mohs really work? The answer is yes. The first piece of good news came in October 2020, when Mohs passed its first major test. 
During that trial, it successfully protected the city from a 1.3 meter tide, and it has succeeded multiple times since. However, that doesn't mean flooding has been eliminated, because nature always has surprises. In December, Mose failed to stop an unexpected surge, and water once again poured into the city. Images of residents wearing boots and struggling through flooded streets resurfaced, despite hopes tied to Moses' arrival. Some assessments even suggest that if the tide were to rise two feet, Moes could become ineffective. Before Moes became an engineering marvel capable of protecting Venice, the project had to confront enormous challenges rooted in the city's unique geography and long history. Venice sits in one of the largest lagoons in the Mediterranean, spanning 550 km Wanasun and surrounding clusters of small islands. Of that total area, only 8% is land, 12% is open water and canals, while the remaining 80% consists of mudflats, shallow waters, and salt marshes, forming an extremely complex ecosystem. Implementing MOES in this environment was not only a technical challenge, but also raised environmental concerns. Artificially holding back water could reduce oxygen levels in the lagoon and impact its diverse ecosystem. Moreover, MOES is not a permanent solution. If sea levels continue to rise and high tides become more frequent, the system could reach its limit around 2050-2060, forcing Venice to rely on additional measures to protect the city from severe flooding. The construction journey of the 1915 Shanakal Bridge began with the fabrication of massive caissons inside a dry dock along the shore, where the base sections were cast with exacting precision. Once completed, the caissons became the foundation that would bear the full weight of the steel towers rising from the middle of the sea. The enormous concrete block then floated like a mobile island, drifting across the water with quiet authority. Tugboats moved into position, attached cables to specially designed anchor points, and guided the structure centimeter by centimeter to its mooring area in the bay. At the seabed of the Dardanelles Strait, Four large steel guide pipes were installed and secured with high-strength bolts. They were aligned using laser systems to ensure perfect verticality in a three-layer current environment. To lower the caisson, 29 independent internal compartments were flooded with tens of thousands of cubic meters of seawater, balancing weight and descent. Tugboats maintained its axis while DP vessels ensured it did not collide with the dense network of seabed cables. With the foundation secured, Massive steel modules were lifted to form the bridge towers. Heavy lift cranes operating in strong winds hoisted each steel segment hundreds of meters high. Aerodynamic shaping and internal damping systems allowed the towers to withstand wind speeds exceeding 100 km h. Once the towers reached full height, the first pilot rope was dropped to a waiting tug and pulled across to the opposite shore. Winch systems tightened the rope, establishing the first alignment axis for construction. From this guideline, a suspended catwalk stretching kilometers was assembled, providing a work platform for installing the main cables. Steel mesh panels and wire coils were anchored to the towers and joined in mid-air, with sag continuously adjusted for worker safety in high winds. On the catwalk, thin steel wires only a few millimeters thick were tensioned and bundled together, eventually forming a main cable nearly one meter thick. A total of 144 wire bundles were combined, creating a cable with a total steel length measured in hundreds of thousands of kilometers. Hydraulic tensioning fine-tuned the curve and sag to meet structural load requirements. Beneath the cables, the deck took shape from large steel segments using a twin box girder design. Each segment was engineered for stiffness and vibration control through internal reinforcement. A central gap between the box girders acted as a natural wind passage, reducing aerodynamic turbulence. Deck segments were installed in balanced pairs to stabilize lifting forces. Sensors kept each module steady against waves and wind, preventing twist or misalignment. Joint edges aligned within millimeter tolerances and were secured with high-strength bolts and welds. Finally, the driving surface, railings, wind barriers, and lighting systems were installed. Hundreds of sensors monitored the bridge's structural health in real time. When the final coat of red paint covered the towers, the 1915 Shanakali Bridge was ready for the first vehicles to cross the strait. Mose is not just a flood barrier, but a symbol of humanity's ongoing struggle against nature in Venice. 
Although it has proven effective during major high tides, the system still faces questions about the future as sea levels continue to rise and the climate becomes more extreme. Venice must therefore remain vigilant, adapt, and prepare for new challenges ahead. And if you want to explore more engineering feats that are changing the world, please like and follow the Mandarin Tech Channel.